Fang, heart, spine, talon, tail. Long ago, the five nations lived in harmony. But then, everything changed when the Fang Nation attacked. Only Sisu, the last dragon, could stop them. But when the world needed her most, she vanished. Raya and the Last Dragon just came out last week. Raya takes place in a realm known as Kumandra, a reimagined earth inhabited by an ancient civilization. A warrior named Raya is determined to find the Last Dragon. Now, Raya and the Last Dragon was a good movie. I went into the movie without any high expectations and I actually really enjoyed the movie. At the time of this recording, the movie is sitting on a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. Everything about this movie was beautiful. We get to see the breathtaking landscapes of this fictional Southeast Asian land. The voice acting was very well delivered and the score was magnificent. This was of course done by the legendary James Newton Howard, who has done films like Space Jam, The Dark Knight, and the Fantastic Beast series. Raya and the Last Dragon was a revolutionary movie, not just because it had a great score, cast, and animation, but what really made this movie special was that the movie was inspired by Southeast Asia. Revolutionary in the fact that it is the first major American movie by a major American motion picture studio about Southeast Asia. At least one that's not about martial arts or war. Yeah! I'm a lead farmer, mother The movie would also feature the first Southeast Asian lead character from Disney, as well as the first Southeast Asian Disney princess. Raya was played by Vietnamese actress Kelly Marie Tran. It is so exciting to be the first Southeast Asian Disney princess. It is a big deal. And also written by two Southeast Asian writers. Both of the writers have done an amazing job creating this beautiful world, writing an engaging story, and showcasing our beautiful Southeast Asian culture. This movie was particularly special for me, of course, because, well, I'm Filipino one of the countries in Southeast Asia. There are approximately 8 million Southeast Asians in the United States, approximately 680 million in the world, or about 8.68% of the whole world. But in Western media, Southeast Asians are seen as mostly an afterthought, pretty much ignored. If asked, most people don't even know what Southeast Asia is. And most of the time, we're just lumped along with other East Asians. So are you Chinese or Japanese? I live in California last 20 years, but uh, first come from Laos. Huh? Laos. We Laotian. The ocean? What ocean? We are Laotian from Laos, stupid. It's a landlocked country in Southeast Asia. It's between Vietnam and Thailand, okay? Population 4.7 million. So are you Chinese or Japanese? Oh. As a little boy who loved Disney movies, comic books, and video games, I never really saw people who looked like me with my skin color. Unless, of course, they were portraying a sexy prostitute, a goofy computer nerd, or some martial arts fighter. Me love you long time. Now what's right me so cold? What was that? That's nothing! Besides the roles I just mentioned, just think for a second. Can you name even just one Southeast Asian male actor that was a lead in the movie. Just one. Oh, the only person that even comes to mind is Henry Golding, but then again, he's only half. Of course there are some, I'm not saying that there aren't any, but they are far and few in between. So as a little Southeast Asian boy growing up in America, who did I have to look up to? What representation did I have? Henry Golding wasn't making movies when I was 10 years old. But Raya and the Last Dragon has been unique in the sense that it gets to provide that desperately needed representation to kids who are just like me. Let's take a look at some things that are from Southeast Asian culture and history. The first thing you may notice is Raya's hat. At first glance, it may just seem like a typical Asian conical hat, but it's actually a salakot. Used as protection from the sun for farmers and is commonly made from bamboo. It's also called many different names depending on the country of origin. Raya has a variety of weapons she uses in the movie. The first we see is Arani sticks, used in Aranis or Eskrima, the national martial arts of the Philippines. In the beginning, we see Raya fighting using techniques from Filipino Aranis fighting style. They also practice Muay Thai and other styles of martial arts. 
We also see her father, Chief Benja, wielding a kalis, also known as a sudang or karis, which is a sword that features a wavy-like blade. The wavy shape of the blade supposedly makes it easier for slicing, especially through bone. Chief Benja also wears what looks like to be a Thai warrior mask. And all the characters are filled with attire from Southeast Asian culture. The cloths, all of Thai silk or Songket patterns. Every time they eat, it's always a Southeast Asian dish or fruit. The most prominently featured food is the tom yum, which is a Thai spicy soup which consists of shrimp, lemongrass, bamboo, chili, and palm sugar. In which, Chief Benja suggests is a food that will unite the nations. Additionally, we see jackfruit, durian, and other fruits. The movie is riddled with delicacies and dishes that would make any Southeast Asian long for their mom's cooking. In addition to the attire, weapons, and food, the story borrows elements from a lot of Southeast Asian folklore. Slight spoiler ahead, nothing major, but the land of Kumandra is infested with these monsters known as Druns. They're evil creatures that turn people into stone just by touching people. They're held in balance by the dragons, but eventually they overpower the dragons and in turn, the majority of the land's population turns into stone. This could be a nod to the Sing Kalembai from Malaysian folklore, who could turn anyone into stone simply by greeting them. When the people turn into the stone, they make a Y gesture, which is a Southeast Asian greeting popular in Thailand. The dragons, specifically Sisu, seems to be inspired by the dragon Naga, or in the Philippines, the Bakunawa. The Bakunawa has the power to control rain, wind, and even earthquakes, which are some of the abilities that Sisu has control over in the movie, which is also fitting because she's a water dragon, just like Naga slash Bakunawa. Now, of course, this movie is not without its faults. It actually received quite a bit of criticism earlier this year for casting too many East Asians in a movie about Southeast Asia, almost as if the Western world just lumps us together as the same thing. So are you Chinese or Japanese? Oh. Now, I get that they're voice actors and their ethnicity shouldn't have anything to do with their voice acting ability. And that would be true if they were using professional voice actors. And I would be okay with that. If that were the case, we'd be seeing names like Vic Mignogna, Mae Whitman, Jack Decina, Greg Baldwin, Zach Tyler, or Dante Basco. Speaking of which, why isn't Dante in this movie? That's rough, buddy. But these were primarily live action actors that were chosen specifically for being East Asian. Disney really just casted Kelly Marie Tran and called it a day. So are you Chinese or Japanese? Oh. But overall, this movie has done a great job with putting a spotlight on Southeast Asia. And I really appreciate the effort that was made to showcase our culture and our countries. I really hope that this movie can act as a catalyst that further sparks an introduction of more Southeast Asian stories into American media. With that, I just wanted to take a minute to talk about a book I wrote. It's called Istaman. Like I stated earlier, I wanted to have more exposure of Southeast Asians in the media, which is part of the reason why I wrote this book. It's about a little Filipino superhero who defeats his enemies by working hard and never giving up. It's available now on Amazon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.